This video looks into whether the Kecksburg UFO of 1965 and a Nazi wonder weapon called De Glocka from 1945 were the same object and whether the object was lost in time for two decades. On December 9, 1965, the sky over Kecksburg, Pennsylvania was lit up by a fireball. It appeared to crash in a wooded area outside of town. People who went to the site reported that the army was already loading an object that looked like a giant acorn or a bell onto a flatbed trailer and covering it with a canvas. But how could the army have arrived on the scene so quickly? It was like they had advance notice that the object was going to crash at that time in that place. But how would that have been possible? Everyone knows that time travel isn't really possible. It's just science fiction, right? Now back two decades to 1945, near the end of World War II, an idyllic scene would have met the eye. A long north-south valley, wooded hillsides, maybe a bicyclist riding by in the distance, delivering goods from a local market. But in the valley stood a test facility. A giant cement ring on pillars stood alone. The remnants of a huge cooling tower for a nearby power plant. The Nazis had chosen the site for an experiment that they hoped would turn the tide of the war. The Allies were moving the Germans back farther each day, and out of desperation, Hitler had authorized the development of wonder weapons, one of which, the Glocke, or the Bell, remember the description of the Kecksburg UFO, was not intended to do its job in the present, but in the past. The pilots of the Glocke might have had a briefcase full of information for Hitler, not only to tell him what he had done wrong that had led to Germany being about to lose the war, but also what he might have done that he didn't do. Hitler had hesitated to launch a cross-channel invasion because the Luftwaffe had failed to gain air superiority over the Royal Air Force. The result was the American buildup in England and thousand plane raids by the U.S. Army Air Force and the Royal Air Force, day and night, around the clock. Hitler would be advised by the time travelers to launch Operation Sea Lion to invade England regardless of the risks, and if successful, the thousand plane raids would never happen, at least from England. In a blockhouse in the valley, scientists monitored instruments. 600 feet away, de Glocke sat inside a huge cement ring. People remarked that this ring looked like something a giant might use to put his teapot on. An original blockhouse stood abandoned a hundred feet closer. It's reported that this 500-foot distance had proven deadly when in an earlier test of de Glocke, scientists had been killed, with their blood ending up crystallizing. Vegetation had also been killed within this 500-foot distance. If the reports are true, there must have been some really advanced and also some really unsafe technology at work. This project had been given an above-top-secret classification by Hitler, so it would have been probable that high-ranking officials of the Nazi inner circle would have been present to report back to Hitler immediately with the results of the test. Maybe Hermann Goering, considered on and off to be next in line to be Fuhrer if something happened to Hitler. Also present at Hitler's invitation might have been Werner von Braun. Both would have been present to report back to Hitler but also to determine for themselves if this device might offer some technology that would help with their own projects. For Goering, it would have been the Luftwaffe and its efforts to regain air superiority over the RAF. For von Braun, it would be his V-2 rocket program. The de Glocke scientists would have checked with each other and the head scientists would have thrown a switch. De Glocke might have wobbled a bit, then risen into the air a bit, it was said to be attached to the cement ring by cables to keep it centered within the ring. De Glocke might have become enveloped in a mist, then disappeared. The cables would then be lying on the ground. The crew of De Glocke might have spent days in the past, getting to Hitler, giving him the information, and answering any questions that Hitler might have. Then time would be spent getting back to the craft and returning to 1945. To those in the blockhouse, the Glocka would only appear to have been gone a few minutes when it reappeared. But according to accounts, the craft did not reappear. 
Many minutes might have gone by with the scientists just staring at the instruments and the cement ring, trying to will the glocka to return. Those observers present would have started to leave, giving up on the project. If von Braun was present, he would have at least been polite, maybe asked a few questions, then left. Goering, however, if present, would have huffed, walked out, slammed the door, dreading having to tell Hitler that the glocka was lost in time. He might have stared in the direction of the ring, then spit on the ground, finally heading for a staff car. Now back to Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Twenty years after the de Glocka experiment, an object crashed into a wooded area near Kecksburg. If it was de Glocka making its return to the world, where might it have spent the last twenty years? And what condition would any pilots be in? Were the pilots in a state of suspended animation, not knowing twenty years had passed? Or were they dead? If it was de Glocka that reappeared at Kecksburg, is de Glocka now in a government facility somewhere? after having been reverse-engineered? And if it is, does this country now have the capability for time travel? That would be the ultimate top secret. What do you think? Please feel free to comment below. Was an alternative possibility about what the object at Kecksburg, Pennsylvania might have been a Russian space capsule? Maybe a heat shield ablated on the re-entry, melting and flowing back along the periphery. This would have melted around the edge of the bottom of the capsule, forming a shape similar to an acorn. On a probability scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being probably not unexplained phenomena at all, and 10 being true unexplained phenomena, it's difficult to rate this incident because there are two incidents involved, the de Glocka experiment and the Kecksburg UFO. First, we will rate the de Glocka experiment at a 5. This rating system is only our opinion and is offered to stimulate, comment, and further information that you, the viewer, may have. The Glocka was probably in the planning stages, and the blueprint stage at least. This is indisputable. Blueprints were found. Whether a test was performed on a finished craft, and if so, whether it was an experiment in time travel, is debatable. There are some reports and rumors about the experiment being performed. As far as the Kecksburg UFO being the Glocka, we give that possibility a three. It seems much more likely that it was a Russian space capsule. Pictures of early Russian capsules resemble an acorn shape. And also, you would think that alien craft capable of crossing from one solar system to another would have backup systems that would prevent the many crashes we are expected to believe have happened. If you would like to view future episodes of Amazing Unexplained Phenomena, click on the subscription button below. It's free and it really helps us. Thanks for watching.